Okay, cinematic camera. Uh, pretty much what it is, it allows you. It it allows the camera to move around the world without player input. So the cinematic camera it lives in the miscellaneous tab. Then scroll down to see so cinematic camera. I'm also at Manchester Oxford Road on the Liverpool Manchester route. So I'll plug it down somewhere where you can see it, like there in this little back street. So double click on it and you should have this pop-up menu on the right. So this is camera one of one. Let's go to let's go to the previous camera. That was going to be next camera. This one is to add a new camera, so a control point. This one is to set the camera to where your camera is currently looking at. So if I look up here at this student accommodation, if I and I press this, so look at the camera has not moved to where I was looking at, which is cool. Um, here you have the camera's X, Y, and Z values in the editor. This one is high above the terrain. This one is the field of view. So 65 is a bit zoomed in, and 100 is fully zoomed out. Uh, duration is how long the how long you want it to take to go from one camera to the next in seconds. So, so, so if, I, if I put in five then it would take five seconds for the camera to go from one camera to the next. This is the camera's name, so playing camera. This is to play the animatic, which we will eventually create, and this is how long has elapsed. So, seconds, minutes, hours. So if I go back up to the platform, so if I go to platform one, and I press look at, the camera has now moved to where I was looking at. So now the camera is pointing at the 150 I put down. So if I press this again, so our control point, and I'll have a second camera. And if I go over here now, and I press look at, I have two cameras. One camera over there and one camera over here. So I have two cameras. If I press this button over here, it will take me back to the previous camera's properties. And if I press play, the camera now moves across the tracks. It takes 5 seconds, because I put in a value of 5 as this parameter over here. Offset. So if I put in like 2 seconds, no, 2 seconds, put that one to 0. And press play here. It moves a little quicker because I put the time from 5 seconds to 2 seconds. You know, speed since time, you know, that thing. So if I want to add in a third camera, I go, I press this button up here in the top right, click it and it goes to the second camera. If I put my camera closer to the 150, like, say, there, I can add a new camera and look at. Now the camera is originally right in front of the 150. Of course, it will be a lot of zoomed in, so I have to put this to 100. Now the camera, will, the camera will be fully zoomed out, which means you can see all of the train. So I might last that last two seconds, just so we can add some leeway for when we do a forced cab camera later. So five seconds and five seconds. So if I press this little play button down here. Not this one, this one. Where my mouse cursor is. So if I press play now, we, we can... We, we, we have a nice little cinematic. Lasting 11 seconds. It looks cool. So, now that we have our camera sorted, we just need to go into the timetable view. In the top left, zoom in on our player, which I called player. And so far, the only thing he's doing is going to DZ, which is literally just down the road. So I want to create an event, trigger instruction, click on it. I want to call it um, intro movie in camel case. Close that. And then I want to force the cab camera on the train. So force cab camera. So I have two events. I should make it three. Uh, call it warning driver. Uh, uh, 
that was a an intro thing that's it. It's something generic. So obviously I can't play it now because I haven't really done anything with the camera or anything. It's just it just exists. So I want I want the intro movie to play first at time plus zero seconds. So literally right at the start. That I want to I want to force the cab camera to execute after the intro cinematic has finished. So you need to click on this camera. Oh, it dumped. So anyways, after the game dumped, we can press this play button. And you want to make a note of how long the cinematic is, so it's just so you don't end up cutting yourself off at the end. Or in the middle of the start. So this cinematic is 11 seconds long. So for the camera, I want to offset that by 11 seconds, just so the intro cinematic plays fully and then goes into the cab. Then once in the cab, I want this to play, you can play it immediately by like a bit of a delay. So I'll put that to two seconds, two seconds offset. Also, I'll just make him wait in Dean's Gate, just for completion. Uh, for phone two in Dean's Gate. So now that you have that set up, we want to press this button over here called Script. Click Open Folder, which will take you to the folder on your hard drive or SSD or folder program thing. So this is these are your scenario files for the scenario. So to right click, New. Uh, just have a text box in. Uh, you can change the extension. By yourself. I'm going to call it uh, scenario script.lua. Yes. Now you can open it in any idea you want, but I'm going with Notepad. Now we have a, a blank Lua script. Uh, next, I want to create a function. So, function on event. Apparently, we don't need braces in Lua. And I'm passing in an event. So, in TrainSim, these little trigger instructions are called events in Lua. So we're passing in the event that gets called from the from the scenario. So if you don't know what a function is, it like in maths, you know, a function is input, process, output. So in Lua, the input is the parameter you pass in here. The process is whatever's inside the function, but then the output is whatever gets returned. So if, and then end, then a tab for you know neatness because no one likes but no one likes reading messy code. So if event equals intro movie. Oh yeah, the thing about Lua is like you can compare, you can compare strings with double equals, not like in other languages where you have to implement the uh, comparable interface and then use compare to, with which return zero or one. No, it will return negative one, zero or one. You know how to sharp and Java and things. So I want to make a system call. So sys call. To one of Train Sim's functions that built, that's built into it. So I want to call Camera Manager, Camera Manager, and then activate Camera. Yeah, I've got to open up, I've got to open on a, a laptop so we can see what I'm doing. Then the whatever we call that camera, so camera, and then another parameter on the end. I'm not quite sure what the rock parameter is, but it's important. Oh, by the way, Lua, Lua isn't something that I learned at uni, I just had to Google it on YouTube here. So, intro movie that will play our cinematic. Then we need, a, we need an end for our function. That's the function's end. So, if, then, end. So if uh, event no not even if event equals fourth cab camera no our second command here 
North Capcom then make another sys call. So take this parameter and copy it because it's, it is exactly the same. Then a comma we want to pass in a parameter called a cab camera. Or the cab camera. Then a parameter of zero. So we have an event for our intro movie, which I've called it in the top right over here. Then make a system call to the activate camera. Um, that will play our intro cinematic. And then the force cab camera after the intro cinematic has finished. So we can enter the camera and enter the cab and then set up the cab ready for departure. What you can also do is lock the player's controls. So they don't end up like clicking stuff. So what I'm going to do is make a, another system call. First parameter will be scenario manager, colon, lock controls. This one only has one parameter. Then down here, because if you don't if you, if you don't unlock the controls, you won't be able to do anything. So make another system call down here. So scenario manager colon unlock controls. And then that's it. So there's your lower script, it should work fine. What you do is go I have to do now is go back in here, click reload, then compile, generate the MD5 hash, click OK, no changes to save, press play and the each cinematic should play. Oh yeah, make sure to um, check your spelling because if you spell things wrong, bad things will happen. Morning driver, that was an intro cinematic. So yeah, that was how you do an intro cinematic. Uh, it's a little complicated the first time round, but you'll eventually get it. So that was all I wanted to cover for this video. So like the video if you're so inclined, subscribe for more train sim content. Uh, follow me on Twitter for future video updates. Uh, join my Discord for a general train chat. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.